Good morning. Now my normal time, my normal time is at night to do periscopes, but I'm going on vacation on Monday, so I will not be here. So I thought I'd hop on here today since we leave tomorrow and give you one last summer periscope on I've assessed now what. Today's topic is going to be on this. Stop teaching reading. Start teaching readers. Hi Jess. Uh, this is something that is very near and dear to my heart. Um, I've been teaching struggling readers for probably 11 years now. I lost track. And the thing is, is that um, I see so many teachers looking for worksheets and looking for programs and even in my own district we were looking for a new program and the teachers wanted to buy a new basil and <clears throat> kind of just breaks my heart that we've come to that. I'm going to go ahead and flip the camera. I feel funny talking to a picture. And it, it's uh, something that I feel like I can't talk enough about that if you're going to teach readers how to read, you have to teach them to love reading. And no child is going to learn how to love reading by using a basil. I'm sorry, it's just not gonna happen. Are they gonna become a better reader maybe? Are they gonna have some better skills? Possibly. But <clears throat> are they going to love reading? No, so there's so much more that has to go into this. So then teachers think, well good, I do a read a lot every day. I read to my kids. Great, but there's so much more that we can do as teachers to instill I can't believe some schools. I know, novel study is one of my favorite things to do. <clears throat> Excuse me, morning voice. Ever, because it, it took you in a place with your kids that this magical adventure, no matter where you were in history or in sci-fi or in just a realistic story of a heartwarming thing like Shiloh, it brings us together emotionally with our children too. So it's so much more than reading. It's giving those experiences to your children and, and becoming connected with them as people too. You get to talk about their emotions, their feelings, their desires. You get to learn so much more about your kids by reading real literature than you do, hi everyone, um, than reading a basil reader or a passage and I get that we need to drill our kids on certain things and they need to have different materials for different resources but the basics of your reading program should be literature and yes is it harder to do mm -hmm. is it harder to find materials yes is it something that's going to take you a lot of time you bet um, they to me they're not I, I don't want to call them the evil I'm I'm trying to be nice here, but you're never going to find what you need in a basil program. And the one thing that used to kill me is when I taught fifth grade and they would take a story like Shiloh and, oh, it's a great novel. Let's put this in our basil. Okay, wonderful. And they throw it in the basil and it's part of the story. You have just killed Shiloh. You know, I, it's, it's awful. So I'm um, not a basil person. I believe you can use basils for resources. I believe sometimes you need a quick read in your mini lessons, fine. But I've got something better I wanna show you. I've come up with a way to teach my kids their basic skills and strategies by using picture books. And that's kind of what I'm gonna get into today. Okay, now you've been told to teach out of your basil. You know, there's ways to do that. I was told that too. And there's ways to do that, but you can make it short and sweet. You can still cover all your bases and then, uh, you know, make it independent work or whatever, but you can, you can uh, make it your own too. And hurry through that stuff and then throw in the good stuff. Now, picture books can actually be used for your main lesson or picture books can be used for students who need extra practice in some kind of a skill. So maybe you've got this guided reading group you want to take aside. Picture books are perfect for that. So what I've done is I've come up with some things that I can use my picture books for, but what I've done is I found a picture book that matches the skill beautifully because if you don't find a good picture book to match the skill or strategy you're still going to lose your kids you can't just read a picture book and, and expect to find the element you're looking for in the story in a generic picture book even if it's cute and wonderful and they're going to love it there are certain ways to use picture books now i've got a few resources that i want to jump in and show you 
and I wanted to kind of explain my rationale. I think I've covered that a little bit. One thing that I do for all of my scopes, because I get to talking and I notice, you know, there's comments that I don't always get to, you know, talk to you about what I wish I could just sit and talk with you about this, is that with the Periscope world and the 15 minute time limit we have, I just don't get enough time to show you what I want to show you. So um, I want to make the most of my time on here with you. So what I do is I put everything that I have on my blog at www.link to the number teach.com. If you go there, you're going to find every Periscope I've done, and then I've got all the handouts, all the worksheets. I've got everything on there. I forgot to turn my Do Not Disturb on. All of that is on there, so you can go ahead and find everything you need from this uh, scope right at your fingertips, okay? So I try to use this part just to tell you the whys, and that part will tell you the hows, okay? And I have all the links there, so don't get um, nervous if you miss a link or you don't even have to take a screenshot. Today, I just wanna talk to you about the ideas, and then you can go there and you can find everything you need um, for that later, okay? All right, so let me move along in my presentation. All right, so. The rationale behind this, okay, you've got to teach the emotion of reading to your students. If you're not going to teach them, oh, this is glaring, oh, there. If you're not going to teach them the emotional components behind why we read, the emotional components, if you're a good reader, you gain something. You gain an experience. You gain something. Yeah, link to teach.com. Perfect. Um, you gain something from that story. When you walk away, you feel touched or amused or you feel like you've learned something. So that's the beauty of reading. When you've got kids that are struggling to decode, they're not going to gain that themselves. So they need that help from you. And picture books are a great, quick, easy way to do that. Make it relevant. It should be important to the kids. It should be, we read to do this. Look at that. Wasn't that amazing? Not we read to finish or do a worksheet or check things off of our list. You read to gain something from it. Make it emotional. Like I talked before, I've got some stories for my mentor text that are amazing. I searched for two years for mentor text to use to teach kids that will really grab them. Get to know your readers. What are they like? You're, you're going to get, you're going to grab their attention more if you're picking picture books that you know they're going to like. If they like trucks and they're in kindergarten, go for it. Find some good truck books to teach them main ideas and details and that kind of thing. Um, use novels whenever you can. Now, even if you teach kindergarten, you can use novels to teach your kids because you can read with them. You can talk about things. You can have them retell the portion that you just read using those Savaro strategies. Um, they need to be able to retell just like the teacher did. You're teaching them what good readers do. And so, yes, you can read novels to your young kids. You can read novels to your older kids. Always try to pick a novel you think might just be a little above them. Therefore, the listening comprehension can take place because the actual decoding doesn't need to. Um, give purpose for reading, okay? Make the lesson suspenseful. Set them up. You ever hear about anticip anticipatory sets? Set them up to want to know more, to want to see more. Give them that desire. They're looking for something. Make it a scavenger hunt. Make it a, oh, who can find it first? Or when you find it, have some kind of prop. Raise it up. You know, whatever it is, but they're involved. Okay? Share, share, share. Now, what do I mean by this? When you're talking and when you're teaching these deep skills, I want those kids turning and talking to one another. I want them talking to you. I want them talking to the group. I want them sharing their thoughts. That is the key element there. If they get to stop and verbalize what's going on right then and there, perfect. That's when you know real learning is taking place. And the last thing is this: these picture books that I'm going to show you. You can do targeted skills. You can do it. It's, they're, they're very enjoyable. And the length and the time of a picture book, many lessons are perfect. Um, you'll love it, and they'll love it. And honestly, that, that's the key. If your kids see that you're excited about a lesson or you're excited about a picture book, they're going to be excited about that lesson. They're going to be excited about that picture book. Okay? So I will get more into detail on this. I've decided that I'm going to branch off and do start doing my own scopes again. And I'll do a little bit more later to tell you how to do this. Right now, I'm just telling you the why to do it, and I'm giving you the resources. But later, I will tell you how. Okay, I'll break it down for you. I thought this would be a good scope before school starts. Many of us are just starting school, maybe next week or just started last week. Um, it's time for us to start 
thinking about our purpose as teachers. What are we doing? What do I want my students to walk out that door with on Monday, Tuesday? What do I want them to feel when they think about school? And when reading time comes and your students don't want to do it, that's a problem. And I've seen that before. Now, a little story. My fifth grade nephew loved to read. We came to visit me, he's from Texas. He came to visit us and we went to Chicago for a trip and he and I got stuck in the back. So we're talking, I thought, I'm gonna talk to him about novels because he loves to read. He's always telling me about the books he's reading. So I said, oh my gosh, what have you read this year? And he's like, well, not much. I'm like, what do you mean not much? And he says, well, last year my teacher used to teach novels and I loved it and I read all these books and then I found more books like them and I read them. This year we do this program and he rattled off the program they do. Whenever I hear the word program I know it's not going to be something that's going to be fun and he rattled off this program that he did and guess what? He goes well day one we do this, day two we do that, day three and I thought oh no you've killed my nephew's love for reading. Don't do that. Don't do that. You're teaching reading. You are not teaching the reader. That reader was lost. And was there anything I could do from far, far away? I tried. But you're with that kid every day. You're with them Monday through Friday. Every time you pull out something to read, it's you that's behind that helm. You've got to make sure that you're not losing them. Stop worrying about those skills and checklists. They will come. If you teach your kids authentic reading, those skills and strategies will follow. Okay, I'll get off my high horse now. Let's get into resources. I'm going to show you some resources. Okay, well, let's see if I can get it to not glare. This is the beauty of having it on my website. Okay, um, I'm going to read them to you. I'm getting a glare. No one wants to see. Okay, this is on my website, www.link2teach2.com. Okay, and they're all clickable. James Patterson has this website. I found it before summer started. It's called Read Kiddo, K-I-D-D-O, Read. How did I not know this existed? Oh my gosh, you've got to check it out. My time's running short. Go check it out. You will not be disappointed. It's amazing. It's for any reader. You think James Patterson, younger or older readers? Nope. Kindergartners. All the way up. The man's amazing. He's a parent, and this is why he did it. Okay, number two. Great picture books to teach mentor lessons with. I've got a link on there. There was a study done, and it's pages and pages and pages, probably that thick, full of books that are great for teaching certain skills and strategies. So I've got that link on there. Um, I've also got, um, I think, one, two, three, four uh, that I've created. Hi, Shirley. <clears throat> I've got four that I created that would be on my TPT store just for you to go look. Um, later this, um, this maybe next week when I get back, I'm going to do a scope about it, and I'll, I'll maybe throw you a freebie just so you can try it out. Um, but making connections using picture books, and I've got the perfect picture book for that. It's We always talked about a spider making connections. I didn't want to lose that with my kids because they already started it, so I found this great book that you use that has a spider in it, and it actually teaches them how to make connections and connects it to the spider idea. Making inferences. Okay, anything by... Um, Uh-oh, I just lost his name. Um, bah, 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 bah. Two Bad Ants. Who's the author of Two Bad Ants? Um, Wreck of the Zephyr. Uh, Chris Van Allsburg. Chris Van Allsburg, king of inferring. So I picked Two Bad Ants to teach my inferencing unit. And I, it's an awesome story. I have a funny story behind that I'll tell you later. Um, Picture books to teach text interaction. This is the one I start with, and it teaches the kids how to not just sit there and take the book, but be part of the experience. So that's the text interaction part. Um, and that one, I've got a book called, um, oh my gosh, it's Saturday morning, and then my brain is on vacation mode. It, it, I'll show it to you in my webpage. Um, but it's about a chicken. And it's a little chicken, and he wants to read a story with his dad, and he keeps interrupting. Well, the whole part, interrupting chicken, that's what's called. Jeez, I don't know what's wrong with me today. But anyway, interrupting chicken is perfect because this chicken keeps interrupting, and it opens up these wonderful conversations with your kids about, was he right to interrupt his dad every time? But the good thing was we found out that the interruption he was making was that showed he was thinking. He was actually involved in the story. He had to do many skills in order to be able to interrupt. So little chicken wasn't so naughty after all. 
And then um, the last one I have on there is visualizing. And for that one, um, I use this wonderful story called Night Song. And I have a blog post on my link to teach.com where I read the story to you and show you that. Yes, I love mentor text too. And every time you teach, you need to think, what are my students going to gain from this? Not just knowledge, but experiences too. Because if they're not walking away from that table going, wow, that was cool, or something they would actually want to go home and tell someone about, maybe you need to rethink what you're teaching. <clears throat> and we can't do that all day long. But when you teach reading, it's, it's very important that you're making those connections with those kids and, and engaging them. Okay, now the other thing I have is that for years ago I was looking for where can I find some of these mentor texts? Well, I put a link on here. Um, the guru of literacy, I love her to death, she actually came to our school and spoke, is Jen Jones. And her store is called Hello Literacy. If you go on there, she has a freebie. I actually put it on my Facebook page and she put it on her Facebook page yesterday. Um, we were talking about, uh, I, I knew there was a product she had because I had it and I had it at school. And I <clears throat> so what was the name of that? I couldn't find it. She has a lot of products in her store and it's actually one of her freebies and it's called a uh, free mentor text and she lined them up to the common core standards but has great lists of great mentor text that you can use and all of those are listed in my store now how did I learn to love to teach reading well I decided you know I don't know much when I became a title one teacher I feel like I should go back and get my master's um, disconnections yeah obviously yeah we don't want to lose our students um, we want them to be connected she's amazing my my name is Jenny and my store is linked to teach and my business is linked to teach and that's what I love to do is link up with other teachers learn strategies and ideas from them and grow together to be the best teachers we can be okay so I've got also in my website that link to teach.com you're welcome I also have in there some books that kind of showed me the way I always thought you know what we need to teach kids to love reading, but is that the most important thing? There's got to be a trick. There's got to be a trick. There's got to be a program. There's got to be something. I searched and searched and searched, decided I'm going to go back and get my master's. I need to be a specialist in this. Did that, got my reading specialist license, and then I thought, you know what? I learned. Just be a good teacher. Honestly, keep learning. Never stop learning. Just teach kids to love reading. Does she have a three to five mentor list? I saw the K2 posted. I don't know, but I'm sure that you could message her and ask her that. Um, I have uh, a bunch of lists I've been putting together, so maybe I can put that together and put that on my store for free too, because um, that's the kids we need to reach the most too. All right, so you ready? Jim Trelease, Read Aloud Handbook. Haven't read that? Oh my. I give that to almost all my parents at the beginning of the year. I please read this book. Okay. Donna Lynn Miller. Ever heard of her? Book Whisperer. Uh, she has also read Reading in the Wild. Two of the best books I've ever read. When I first started wanting to be an arena specialist, um, one of my classes talked about Kelly Gallagher. And I thought, who's this guy? I love it. That's my mom's maiden name. So I thought, oh, I'll read it. Oh, that man has got it together. He's right. And guess what? His book is called Read Aside, and it's an oldie, but a goodie. And actually, it's what school systems are doing. Um, the book I recommend, recommend to my students is Jim Trelease, The Read Aloud Handbook, and all of this is on my blog post. Um, Kelly Gallagher's Read Aside tells you what schools are doing that is killing reading, and honestly, where cheats are killing reading. Um, Nancy Atwell, <clears throat> do I have to say more? If you know anything about reading, Nancy Atwell is your go-to. Her just called The Reading Zone, that book I loved. And the other guy that, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of a groupie, and it's kind of funny because he's this, he's an older guy now, but I just absolutely love his ideas and thoughts. He gets right to the chase. Richard Allington, anything by Richard Allington. Um, the one I had to read for my course was What Really Matters for Struggling Readers, and that really just made it all make sense to me. So that's another one. All of that is listed at my site. I will show you right now where that is. Um, so you can go to my website, and I'm not trying to plug my website, it's just that that's where I put everything because there's no way we can grab all of this right here right now. Okay, so here it is. All right, it's Link to Teach. Hello. I've got too many lights going on in here. Link to Teach. Uh, there we go. Linktoteach.com. Okay. And if you go there, I've, my last blog post, you're going to see I always use the same graphic that I use in my scope. So you'll know. And the same title, too. Stop teaching reading. Start teaching readers. Um, thank you. I, I love making those gift banners. Those are blast. Okay. So that's what I had for you today. 
and I am thrilled because guess what I get to do? I get to go finish getting all the stuff we need for our vacation, finish packing, and tomorrow we take off. We're going to St. Thomas. <sighs> Cannot wait. Taking my two kids, they're 20 and 21, and my nephew. He heard we were going and we're the fun family, so he's like, oh, please, could I go? I'm like, you bet you can go. So anyway, my nephew's going with. Um, you're welcome. It doesn't seem like I said much, but I'm telling you this is, I'm going to tell you the why on my Periscopes and I will give you the how on my website. So uh, you guys have a great weekend and a great start to school. If you do, I'll be back in two weeks, back to my normal Monday night time at six o'clock central time. And you're welcome, Shirley. And I can't wait to talk to you more about our global connections. Pretty excited about that. And everyone else, you know what? Have a great weekend. It's Saturday. Bye.